Australia is the only wealthy nation in the world to dodge the global financial crisis, mostly due to the mining sector. That is why Australia is a momentous target in the crosshairs of the elite who are trying to implement total globalisation. To comprehend what direction our masters want us to go, we must look at the state of affairs in America. The US economy has been derailed by risky loans, Wall Street corruption and mammoth military spending, which has incurred such a debt that recovery is inconceivable. Bailouts have consolidated wealth and power into the hands of a few by propping up the banks and companies that are of concern to those involved. The European Union also is floundering in shallow water with many members on the verge of bankruptcy. The middle class of the richer nations are effectively being wiped out as we see massive wealth redistribution on a global scale. The reason is that a new world order, globalisation, must be built on equality or the poorer nations will have no incentive to join which means lowering the standard of living for everyday Australians to create the economic equilibrium. The global economic hitmen have a solution for the rogue robust Australian economy. It's called carbon tax, which is economic suicide. The carbon tax is a death blow to the land of plenty because 33% of Australia's emissions stem from export orientated activities. that include mining compared to only 8% of the US. The reality is that the demand for mining resources will instead be filled by the US, Canada and Brazil, while gutting the Australian economy. The United States is the world super cop enforcing its plans of a global government on the rest of the world. However, an unseen power is pulling the strings, the Jesuit order, which is the military arm of the Roman Catholic Church. And their aim is to reinstate the Vatican's lost ascendancy of world dominion. Vatican City is not only a religious power, but also a state that has diplomatic ties with other nations. Part of the Jesuit plan to subdue the Protestant nation of the United States was proselytizing through education, infiltration, occupying seats of supreme courts, grooming presidents, dominating and subverting financial institutions, and setting up intelligence agencies. The CIA was a creation of Catholic secret society Knights of Malta, member Alan Dulles. From beginning to end, the New World Order is a Roman Catholic affair, which brings us to the charade of the 2013 Australian federal elections. The appearance of choice between Kevin Rudd and Tony Abbott is nothing more than a US Vatican hedge bet. When Kevin Rudd assumed office in 2007, his policies conflicted with the plans of the United States. WikiLeaks published leaked emails that allude to CIA asset Mark Arbib now resigned facilitating the ejection of Labour Party Prime Minister Kevin Rudd and replacing him with Julia Gillard, who appointed him Foreign Minister, perhaps until he learned to be subservient to the powers that be. After much grovelling and re-education, he was reinstated as Prime Minister. After Julia Gillard imposed the unpopular and diabolical carbon tax, Kevin Rudd's decision to take Holy Communion at the Mary MacKillop Memorial Chapel in Sydney confirms that he, at least at heart, is still a Roman Catholic, even though he does attend an Anglican service with his wife. Kevin Rudd is not immune from another coup d'etat for misbehaviour, as there is already a replacement waiting on the periphery. Minister for Education Bill Shorten is Jesuit educator at Xavier College and is a leader in waiting. The influence of Jesuit educators over former students cannot be underestimated. By moulding the minds of their students, the Jesuit order retains influence over them, even in their more advanced years. There is an old saying, give me the child until he is seven and I will give you the man. Jesuit education would consist in the creation of multiplying agents. Jesuit General Pedro Urupe, SJ. Tony Abbott is a man nurtured by Jesuit maxims, attending Jesuit St. Aloysius and Jesuit St. Ignatius Riverview, where Father Emmett Costello was his mentor who aided Abbott in attaining a Rhodes Scholarship at Oxford University. Cecil Rhodes had been a New World Order advocate, donating his wealth to the further indoctrination of future leaders. As Abbott studied at Oxford University, he subsequently met another Jesuit priest, Father Paul Mankowski, whom he described as the finest man I have ever met, he persuaded Abbott to become a Catholic priest. In 1984, Abbott entered St. Patrick's Seminary located in Manly, New South Wales but later abandoned the idea of priesthood due to the rampant culture of homosexuality. 
Abbott's coalition ministry is shaping as a kind of Jesuit jamboree. Not only are he and Barnaby Joyce old Ignatians, but Joe Hockey is a product of St. Aloysius College. Christopher Pine attended St. Ignatius College, Adelaide, and Kevin Andrews lived at Newman College while studying law and arts at Melbourne University. Unique among Catholic religious orders, Jesuits take a fourth vow. While they all promise poverty, chastity and obedience, only Jesuits pledge obedience to the Pope. Australian politicians who are mentored by Jesuit priests are unfit to lead Australia because of conflicting interests. We were set up to serve the Pope, not be one, stated Greg O'Kelly, Jesuit priest and bishop of Port Pirie Diocese in South Australia. Through a mix of masculine Christianity and svelte intellectualism, the Jesuits seem to have been able to hardwire a large slice of the next shift of political leaders. In Canberra, as it is in Rome, here come the Jesuits, Damien Murphy of the Sydney Morning Herald. The Jesuits were approved by Pope Paul III in 1540 to counteract the Reformation that broke the back of papal rule of the known world. The current Superior General Adolfo Nicholas, also known as the Black Pope, is working with great subtlety propagating Roman Catholic ideology throughout Asia and Oceania at this present time. The first Jesuit to be elected Pope is Francis I confirming that the Jesuit order now has total control of the Roman Catholic Church, and this has subsequently raised the profile of the order within the Commonwealth of Australia through high-profile political agents. The Jesuits pride themselves on social justice due to widespread cover-up of child abuse and money laundering that still plagues the Roman Catholic Church. Recently, we have seen the power of the Roman Catholic Church using government officials to cover up the evil conduct of Catholic priests in relation to child abuse. News reads, New South Wales Police have admitted shredding all records of a senior officer's involvement with a Catholic Church body which deals with sexual abuse. Is this the social justice the Catholic Church is talking about? Nikki Davis says she was sexually abused by a Catholic brother, but she's no longer afraid to talk about it. Yet she says she knows of two other child abuse survivors who say they've been threatened not to talk to the Royal Commission. Some victims are reporting having received death threats because the information, the knowledge that they have, their personal experience is too damaging to the Catholic Church. I do not like the appearance of the Jesuits. If ever there was a body of men who merited eternal damnation on earth and in hell, it is this society of Ignatius Loyola. So what happens when Jesuit educated men are appointed to positions of government? Let's have a look at the turmoil and hijacking inflicted on the United States government. CIA Director George Tenet, educated at Jesuit Georgetown University, and NSA Michael Hayden, educated at Jesuit De Quincey University, had an astonishing and catastrophic intelligence blackout when three allegedly hijacked planes slammed into the World Trade Center and Pentagon. Yet George Tenet was given a medal for his role in the 9-11 fiasco. Figure that one out. It is unclear what hit the Pentagon due to missing plane wreckage, but Pentagon employees in that section were investigating $2.3 trillion stolen from the Pentagon budget. Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld survived the attack. George Bush, a secret Catholic seen here, and here bowing down to the Pope, here is George Bush's cousin Jeb Bush, whom some say is in line for the presidency. Every CIA director since 9-11 has attended Jesuit universities. The NSA has been in the spotlight recently, turning spying into a global phenomenon that has outraged citizens. Roman Catholic General Keith B. Alexander continues his role as Director of NSA and spying on citizens, which brings us to Barack Obama, who was groomed for the presidency by the Jesuits. As his mentor, Jesuit priest Gregory Galuzzo is still advising Obama. And does he keep in, in contact with the organization now? You know, uh... Once he became a U.S. Senator, he, he's very much in demand. So it's only on occasion we get to interact with him. Well, an, an occasion is fine, isn't it? <laughs> Farmer has appointed many Jesuit-educated persons to positions of power. Striking loss of liberties since 9-11 resonates concerns of a staged problem, reaction and solution model of social engineering. Within the United States, the Bill of Rights is a safeguard against tyranny. However, it is plain to see that an all-out assault on the United States Constitution is waged by Jesuit-educated individuals. Lieutenant General Michael Hayden has been in the spotlight for breaching the Fourth Amendment. Unreasonable search and seizure during domestic surveillance 
when he held the position of NSA Director from 1999 to 2005. Now the scandal of global surveillance of citizens has extended itself to Roman Catholic incumbent, NSA Director Lieutenant General Keith B. Alexander. NSA contractor Edward Snowden has defected to Russia after he leaked documents relating to the massive breach of the Fourth Amendment within the United States and disregard of the constitutions of other nations. Michael Quigley, educated at Jesuit Loyola University, sponsored an amendment to the Patriot Act prohibiting sale of arms to individuals on the FBI terror watch list, which sounds reasonable at first glance until we study the US government's revised definition of a terrorist that now includes whistleblowers, protesters, or anyone who holds different opinions to those of the state. This violates the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. Perhaps the Jesuit-controlled United States taken a page out of the Spanish Inquisition's history book. The NDAA is an extension of the Patriot Act, insidiously crafted by Jesuit Georgetown University educated Professor Viet Dinh and is a clear breach of Amendment 4, the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed. So the questions that Australians must ask themselves is what are the dangers of having a Jesuit Catholic controlled Prime Minister in office? Will the interests of Vatican globalisation or the interests of Australians be promoted?